Hi, it's Philip. My name is Carl Jesus. I'm with the Learning Resources Center here at the University of Colorado Denver. And today we're going to be talking about change in weight and uh, really what the free body diagram and equation should look like for um, dips, um, pumps, and loops. And we'll kind of be a little specific. We'll kind of solve a problem here as well. A few problems, so let's get started. Um, so with um, going through a dip, now let's put it on here. We're moving this way through the dip, right? So our velocity is this way for both of these. Um, we're moving through the dip this way, okay? And uh, we're just trying to take a snapshot right there at the bottom to see what our free body diagram would look like. And you can see I have an arrow up, but I don't have the mobile fix there. There we go. So we first want to draw our free body diagram, right? Where weight would be down. Normal force is up and radial acceleration is also towards the center because we know that there's always a net force towards the center, so we know there should always be a force towards the center on our motion. And then what this other force is, it may or may not be there um, based off the question we're talking about, but that force, that net force towards the center of motion is always there. I'm not saying the normal force is always there, I'm saying the net force towards the center of motion is always there. In this case, it's the normal force, okay? So I can already draw that vector larger because I know it's the net force in the in the y direction. I just know weight is also there. Right? So um, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it's something that we know, but it's also something that we can uh, figure out and, and, uh, and kind of look at at the same time. So once we have our free body diagram, right, and you know we've located it because we're trying to draw this in terms of circular motion, our force towards the center of motion, we draw our Newton equation. Now remember, Newton's second law will always be applied to uh, circular motion. So right now we're asked about circular motion. We want to we want to draw a free body diagram and, and describe this this car going through a dip in terms of circular motion. So you know, that's why we're using Newton's second law. If you're asked those things, that's what they're asking you to do. Draw this free body diagram in terms of circular motion. All these things. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and because uh, uh, we could, if we could say it's speeding through the dip, right? There might be acceleration also this way. So I just want to make sure you understand this is just in terms of uniform circular motion. Sorry to kind of cut back to that, but it's important you understand that. So then we uh, write Newton's second law since we know it's always going to apply where this is always going to be radial acceleration. Now remember, we don't always swap in radial acceleration. Uh, we've talked about that on a few different videos, right? We know radial acceleration is equal to um, tangential velocity squared over the radius or it can be equal to omega squared times the radius. Now, if they're talking about speed or your professor's really nice and he doesn't want you to learn about or she, he or she isn't really concerned about you knowing how to solve for uh, or convert omega, they might always throw this at you. But remember what we're asking for when, when you do want to use these. I'm not using them here, I do over here. Just keep in mind that AR, radial acceleration, when we use it for tangential velocity is fat your instantaneous velocity, how fast you're moving, or how fast you leave the circle. That's what this is trying to relate to. Where if you were to use the omega squared times r, that's how fast you're spinning, right? How fast you're spinning. There's a difference between how fast you're spinning and how fast you're moving. And if, if you want to compare them, this is your cir omega is describing your circular motion. Uh, tangential velocity is describing your linear motion. Okay, because you constantly want to Okay, so that's why I'm not using it right now because we're not asked a question about it, but if we were, then you'd want to put it in. Keep in mind, you just don't want to like start drawing different values in for AR unless you're asked for them. Here, we're not asked for them. There's no reason to start converting them. We were just asked for the equation for this and then in the apparent weight. That's what the question asked for both of these. So we solve, right? First, we just write our, our, our equation next. So we fill in this side from our free body diagram. We know normal force is positive. Right, mg is negative, and then radial acceleration is also positive. So this is the equation for this situation, okay? But if, the, if your professor asks you, or the, your homework asks you to solve for apparent weight, which is what, again, remember, this is always true no matter what chapter you're in, right? It's, it's, it's how much you're pressing against the ground or not, right? When we ask your apparent weight, your normal force will always be equal to that, always be equal to how much you're pressing against the ground. So, you know, if you press more against the ground than your weight, the normal force will reflect that. 
you kind of lift up from your seat or don't press so much against the surface, the normal force will reflect that. That's what we're trying to say. So if we ask for apparent rip weight here, we want to always solve for the normal force. When we solve for the normal force, we see that mg is added to some value. So what does that mean? That means that the normal force is more than mg. Okay, it's important you understand that. mg is more than some value. Okay, so the normal force is more than mg. Okay, more than mg. mg plus some value. The normal force is equal to mg plus some value. Okay, so that means you're heavier. Right? But you know when you go into dip, you feel heavier. That's just what that's trying to say. All right. So then we go to this next one. Again, we know Newton's second law is going to apply because the question said, describe this car in terms of its circular motion and draw a free body diagram and draw a, a Newton equation to go along with it. That's what the question asked. So we draw a free body diagram. Again, normal force is always a, um, perpendicular to the surface. Weight is always directly down. And here we see the, the center of the circle or towards the the force towards the center of the circle that we're making or the force towards the center of motion here is weight. So I can draw it longer because I know it's going to be more automatically because the concept, right? But we always want to prove it mathematically. So after we got that, we want to write our free body that, I mean, draw, write our Newton law out, right? So we use Newton's second law. For radial acceleration is negative. I always fill in my, my acceleration first with my Newton equation. And then I always fill in this side from my free body diagram remembering to always bring the negative with me, right? So over here, normal force is positive, weight is negative, so it'd be normal force minus mg, those would be normal forces, so that would be equal to, again, um, that times the radial acceleration, which is, the radial acceleration is negative, which means that home force are negative. So this is the equation for the situation. Again, if we ask you for the apparent weight, now you went over a, dip, a hump before, right? You drive really fast, it feels fun, right? You drive really fast, you go over it, oh! Oh, right, you feel light, right? You feel weightlessness in this sense, is what we say. And that's what this equation is trying to prove you. So when we look at a pair of weight, remember, normal force is how much you're pressing against the surface uh, here in terms of the car. So this weight would be you or the rear of the car. So the whole car is pressing against that way, right? Um, and so uh, when we solve for the normal force, we see that mg is subtracted from some value. mg subtracted from when we solve this equation, mg is going to add over, right? And ma is going to stay negative. When we see mg subtracted from some value, which means the normal force is less, which means you're not pressing on your seat as much, which is you feel lighter, right? You're floating out of your seat. You're not pressing on it as much. And that's what that's trying to say. That's what apparent weight is. All right. So that's true for these two situations. Okay. Keep in mind. Um, any situ and I'll, any again, any situation that looks like this, if you roll a ball over a hill, roll a ball through a dip, it doesn't have to be a car. Any of these types of situations that look like this, these equations won't change, no matter what the object is, just as long as it's moving through the dip or over the hump. Here, this could be anything, okay? This could be a car going through, ro or, I mean, a roller coaster going through a loop, a car going through a loop, a motorcycle going through a loop, a person going through a loop. You know what else it could be? someone swinging a bucket around them with water in it, okay? The water would be the weight of the water. If that's mg there, that's what we'd be describing there if it was a bucket, okay? But this could be all those situations, nothing would change. It would be the same free body diagram and the same equations, all right? So let's kind of take a look at that now. So again, we're moving this way through the circle, okay? I probably should have put that on there, but you know, you can know in terms of omega, is telling us which way we're spinning, right? So this, if the car is moving this way or the roller coaster is moving this way, I'm not gonna go through all the examples again, okay? But they're all the same thing. I don't want you to think, oh, this is for a roller coaster, but what happens if they talk about a bucket that they're swinging around in a circle over their head? This is the same thing, all right? Okay, so for the left and the right, we're not gonna get too much into it because we don't talk about it much in this class, but, um, we do want to make sure that we do understand them, so that's why they're kind of off to the side. But the main focus here is going to be the bottom and the top, all right? So when we draw our free body diagrams, right, we, we, we start with the bottom here, and we see normal force is up, weight is down, and radial acceleration again. And the net force is always going to be towards the center of motion or towards the center of the circle you're making. And that's always going to be the direction of radial acceleration, so it's going to be up. And here we know normal force is that net force towards the center of motion. All the things we talked about over here, so it can be longer than mg. All right, over here, we see normal force again is this way. Why is it normal force 
Because remember, normal force has to do with contact, surface contact. If we're making contact with the surface, there's going to be a normal force there. And it's pointed out at that point, and weight is directly down. Again, radial acceleration will be towards the center of motion, just like that net force there. Over here, uh, on the, or I'm sorry, on the top, you, you see that weight is down and normal force is also down, right? They're both in the same direction. And since that's the center of the circle we're making, then, then the radial acceleration is also down. Now be careful here, okay? This is moving inside the loop, right? If we were on top of the loop, like moving over the loop this way or moving over the loop this way, like the car was on top, that would just be this, okay? So that's why this is a different situation, all right? This, this is describing if we were driving over the loop, right? Either way, this is describing if we're in the loop, underneath the loop, okay? It's important to that. So normal force is down because we're pressing up against the surface, up the surface of the track or whatever. The water's pressing against the surface of the bucket, the bottom of the bucket. The weight is down and the radial acceleration is also down because that's towards the center of our motion. So we see over here on the left, that again, normal force because of contact is towards the center along with radial acceleration and weight is down, all right? To be able to draw all of those, but the focus again is gonna be the top and the bottom. If you do see the look at the equations for the right and the left, we see the right, right, has negative radial acceleration. So we put that in there again, always using Newton's second law. And then we see normal forces towards the center. It's also negative, right? Negative X is over here, negative Y is down here, right? So since it's pointing towards the negative X, those are also towards the negative. You can make them both positive if you wanted to and write it like this too, right? Because the negative and negative, they both cancel and like that. We kind of do that down here. So it's up to you, both of these equations Right? And then on the left, right, we see that the normal force towards the center, mg is going down. The radial acceleration is this way. These are both positive, right? We're just trying to describe the x direction here. Probably should have been uh, focused on that. We're not really looking at trying to write an equation for mg as well, so just keep that in mind. Again, we're not focused on these, so that's why. That's why not? Because we're not focused on these in this class, so don't worry about it. All right, so then we just fill in the, the of forces, which is just normal force, which is the only thing in the x direction, and the radial acceleration, and we're done. Those are, again, just the equations for the right and left. We're not focused on them. Don't worry. Also, keep in mind, as we do this, we're ignoring friction. So that's also why these free body diagrams look what they, or look how they do. Um, remember, friction resists motion, so if there was friction here, if we're moving this way, friction would be opposite, right? So we want to think about that stuff, and we could also think about when you're in this anyway. Don't worry, this is, this is what we want, okay? So now, let's look at the bottom here because that's usually the first situation we give you. So we're at the bottom, and keep in mind, this will also work if you're a roller coaster coming in with linear motion, and then you start to go in a loop, right? The linear motion will be described with your linear equations or maybe in conservation of energy, but when you have to describe going through the loop, you have to describe it this way, either way, okay? So it's really valuable information to know what you're doing at the bottom, what you're doing at the top for a lot of different reasons, all right? So at the bottom, right, we have, we know we're going to use Newton's second law because that's what's always going to be used for circular motion, like we said. And we want to fill in, right, we know radial acceleration is positive, so that's fine. Then we want to fill in our free body diagram, or fill in our equation from our free body diagram. So normal force is positive, right, mg is negative, so normal force minus mg is equal to mar. And again, don't fill in, we've already talked about why we're not filling in tangential velocity over radius or omega times radius because there's no reason to. We weren't asked to. We were just asked for an equation to describe this bottom situation and that would be it. Okay? Now if we asked you for the apparent weight down there, you'd again solve it for the normal force and we do. We do. We know when we're going through a loop, right? And we're coming down towards the bottom of the loop, coming through the loop. If you haven't done this, then you don't know, but we're coming towards the bottom of the loop and you feel the bottom, you feel really heavy, right? And that's what this is telling us. When we bring this over, mg is going to add to some value, right? And you see the normal force is equal to mar plus mg. mg added to something, right? So that means you're going to feel heavier, all right? At the bottom down here, if we're moving through that loop, right? That's what we're saying, just moving through the loop. If you want to think, remember, we're just describing the circular motion here. And then the top, right, same situation, just a little bit different. We also we'll always want to start with our, our Newton law, right? We have our free body diagram, so we want to draw 
normal force in there. But remember here, normal force is negative, okay? Because normal force is pointing down, right? And G's pointing down, and, and the radial acceleration, right? It's also down, right? So we want to make sure that all three terms have a negative in them. But if all three terms have a negative in them, right? Or just like this one, all two terms, right? We can make it all positive. We can multiply the whole both sides by negative one, right? Or the negatives will all cancel and turn into a positive. So both these equations are good, okay? Negative normal force minus mg equals a negative mar. That's good, right? Mar is negative, mg is negative, normal force is negative. All good, right? But you can also write it like this. Um, just get rid of the negatives and write it like this. So it's up to you. So both these equations are good, right? And then if we want our apparent weight, we want to solve for, again, normal force. Where when we do that, mg is going to subtract over, right? So we see that we're going to, mg is going to be subtracted from some value. So that means you're going to feel less, which makes sense, right? And that's why I have mg larger than the normal force, right? Here, normal force is all larger. I probably should have made that one a little bit better, right? Because that's the net force towards the center of motion, right? But here I made normal force smaller and mg larger, and it's for that reason, right? But we should have known that before we, got, before we did that, because we know when we're at the top of a roller coaster, we start to stop touching our seat, right? And if we start to touch our seat, the normal force is going to decrease, decrease, right? Because that's all about contact, right? Normal force is about contact. But your weight is there. Your weight's constantly pulling you down. So as a, it's not like your weight's increasing. It's just that your weight is having more of an effect because the normal force is blowing away up there, okay? And that's trying to pull, the weight pull, is pulling you out of your seat. You're making less contact, right? So that's what's happening up there. So we kind of know that that was true, but this just proves it, right, in terms of apparent weight. Now, let's see if you can use what I just told you in a problem, right? So let's say they ask you what the minimum velocity. Now they're asking minimum velocity, which is tangential velocity. All right, if they were asking how fast we were spinning, that'd be omega. And we're saying what the minimum velocity to stay in the seat at the top of the loop, right? How, what's, what's the slowest the car can move or the, or the, the water bucket can be spun? Um, or that, no, wait, spun is omega. But how, how, let's just stick with the cart here, right? How fast is the roller coaster, because that's what this is, have to be moving up there for everyone to stay in their seat, okay? It's speed. It's linear speed, it's tangential velocity, it's instantaneous velocity. How fast does it have to be moving at that moment for people not to lose contact with their seat? Remember, I'm saying this a few ways so you understand, right? To stay in their seat or to lose contact with their seat, right? Every time you hear the word contact, you should think normal force because normal force is contact, right? And they give us the radius of the loop and the weight, right? I mean, I'm sorry, and the mass. So we, want to, we know the equation we need to start with. It's this one, but you should always draw the free body diagram, right? And you would, you would do this, right? Negative MAR, because all of them are negative. Make sure all your terms are negative, but then you can make them all positive, right? So then you have that equation. Now, when you lose contact with your seat, normal force becomes zero, right? And that's something we can use here as a limit. We can say, okay, when normal force is zero, that's when you lose contact with your seat, right? So the speed that we can come up with, we can turn the radial acceleration into a tangential velocity over our insulted up velocity. That speed that we come up with is going to speed you don't is the speed you don't want to go, right? So it's going to be anything above that speed, and you won't lose contact because the speed we're solving for is when you do lose contact. So just as long as you don't hit that speed, you stay above it, you will stay in your seat, and that's how you answer this question. So we say normal force is zero, right? And when normal force is zero, that makes this whole equation just mg equals to mar, right? And then what I do next is kind of a two-step thing, right? I cancel the masses, because they're on both sides, and I turn radial acceleration into tangential velocity squared over r, right? So all, all that's going to be left when the masses cancel is g on this side, and all that's going to be left on this side is tangential velocity squared over r on this side. And then we solve for t, because again, we're looking for the velocity, so we solve for tangential velocity, and since it's squared, we're going to do the square root when r comes over of gr, and we're done. We, again, that's the speed we don't want to move at, right? That's the speed we're going to leave, lose contact. So any speed above this, and you will stay in your seat up there, all right? So I hope this was helpful. Uh, 
uh, again, make sure that you pay attention to why we were doing the things that we were doing and asking the questions we were asking because we can't just ask you for the equation or we can't ask you to answer, answer a certain question, right? All right, I hope this was helpful. I'm super proud of you, and I will see you on the next video.